What is the most exciting genre for films and games? When I say this, the first thing that might pop up into anyone's head is action, adventure, or sci-fi. Though it pales in comparison when it comes to horror. Now horror gives that sense of uneasiness, makes your heart rate double, and uses people's fears to deliver a masterpiece. However, I feel the exact opposite. In fact, I want to go out on a limb and say that the horror genre is dying. Now before you start typing your opinions on why I'm wrong, answer this. What makes a horror movie or game scary? To be honest, I don't even know the answer to this question due to my lack of experience with horror cause well, I'm a pussy. I haven't watched that many horror films nor played that many horror games. So this will be a learning experience for the both of us. Now back to this question. So in order to understand this, we have to go back, like way back, back when Hassan was my age. So that was around 1896 in New Zealand. A guy named Georges Mellies was about to make history for he released a horror film called House of the Devil. This was the very first horror film. Now, this isn't what anyone would call scary. In fact, it's kind of funny to watch. But you have to understand something, that it was a silent film and it was in fucking 1896. However, I like to think at the time people were scared shitless when watching this. As time progressed, movies became more refined. Movies like Nosferatu, Frankenstein, and The Hunchback of Notre Dame would make themselves known. But what people don't seem to talk about is cat people. No. Not those cats. The only horrifying thing about this movie is the amount of money they wasted. No, I'm talking about cat people from 1942. The movie is about a woman having a curse that will turn her into a cat, hence the title. So why am I talking about this movie in particular? It's because of this one scene. It's, well, just watch it for yourself. Now most people are wondering, what's so special about this scene? It's just a bus pulling up, nothing more. But what you fail to understand is that this is the very first jump scare. Again, time moved on and jump scares became more frequent. We start seeing new ideas for horror films. Slasher films involves a one-man killer hunting the protagonist and their friends. The gory film shows unbelievable violence and body dysmorphia to discuss their audience such as Hellraiser or Cannibal Holocaust. I cannot provide footage for this film because it was banned in 50 countries and uses alive animals for the death scenes. I am dead serious, do not watch this film. Found footage or POV films giving off that sense of realism when you're seeing what they're seeing. So maybe that's what makes a movie scary, the protagonist enduring these supernatural and disturbing events. However, I feel like there is something more underneath the surface that I'm not really getting at. Well, let's try... Now in 1982, a game called Haunted House was released on the Atari 2600. This was the first survival horror game. Horror with quotations because calling this scary is like calling reaction videos quality content. But as things stood where it was, horror games wouldn't go far until 2010, when a game called Amnesia The Dark Descent took the internet by storm. All thanks to a certain Swedish man, I think his name was Felipe or something. This game was unbelievably scary. The music, the feeling of being chased, the lighting, complemented each other nicely to make this game. Not to mention this game inspired practically the entire horror game franchise one of which heavily being the Outlast games. This game has the same concept but with a different narrative, and some people might say that Outlast is scarier than Amnesia, which is just a blatant fucking lie. And just when we think horror has reached its peak, P.T. Silent Hill releases. Now, I've never really found the Silent Hill series to be scary, 
But what fascinated me the most is the world they built, and them coming out to release this scary game is amazing. This game and its story are clouded in mystery, with the only thing they give you is an endless hallway that changes the more you keep going, giving you those small but minute details of what's actually going on. This could have been the next step for horror games, however, this game will never come out since Konami fired Kojima and soon after canceling the game. You can't even play the demo anymore because it was completely removed from everything. So now the only way to truly experience this full demo is to watch it on YouTube. And to this day, people still come back to this same video to see what the greatest horror game could have been. The way I see things, if horror started to reach its peak from 1980 to 2014, then the decline probably started around 2015. Don't get me wrong, there were some good films and games that came out occasionally, but those were like rare gems. Most films and games now rely heavily on jump scares and films release more of the same movie due to money. There's nothing wrong with these two if it's done right. Jump scares, for example, are very easy to do, but it's very easy to mess it up. When you have to use a loud audio cue accompanied by something scary or something popping out of nowhere and getting in your face, that's not a good jump scare. It's stupid and boring. Jump scares need to focus less on how loud it should be and mainly focus more on unpredictability because when movies and games are using the same jump scare tactics, it just becomes more predictable and less startling. Your film shouldn't rely on the jump scares, it should rely on the world you're trying to build. And this is where film slash game series come into play. Now this is completely different from jump scares. It's basically when your favorite movie slash game series gets a new release in the same universe due to its first film's major success. The problem with this is that if you're going to make a movie series, make sure the story makes sense. Paranormal Activity being one of the cases here. The first movie was genuinely scary, it was great, it was good, but as each movie came out, it started to make less and less sense to the point where they were like, fuck it, ghost dimension, like, what? <laughs> How did we go from a found footage movie about ghosts to getting killed by black shadow figures, a ghost dimension, and getting their neck snapped by the equivalent of SCP-096? And this is where the series completely died. It's not just film series either. I haven't even talked about the reboots yet. Two films that fell victim to this was The Blair Witch Project and John Carpenter's The Thing. These movies were great, amazing in fact, but were ruined by their reboots because of how they were made. The Blair Witch reboot ruined that sense of mystery of what the Blair Witch really was by showing whatever this thing is. And The Thing reboot ruined that disgusting gore by using CGI and... What is this? What am I looking at? Reboots really shouldn't be a thing at all because it just focuses on getting as much money from people's nostalgia instead of making something new and original. So, we're finally here to answer the million dollar question, just what makes a horror movie and horror game scary? Let's go back to the cat people jump scare. Uh, let me just put this back here and all right. If this scene was made in 2022 instead of 1942, this would probably have a suspenseful music ending with a loud audio cue signifying the jump scare happening. But in this, there is no music, no loud noises. We see a woman walking through a dark tunnel like there's nothing wrong, but slowly, she realizes that tunnel seems to go on endlessly, and she starts to panic. The sound of her heels, which started as a carefree walking, devolves into her frantically sprinting until finally... <laughs> That build up to the jump scare was perfect. And the thing is, that is the only jump scare in the entire film, which makes it even better. But not just the jump scares. Silent Hill has that amazing world building around a creepy town with monsters. Lost in Vivo's soundtrack is able to make you feel safe, but at the same time, make you terrified. Color Out of Space tells an H.P. Lovecraft story of an alien called The Color who warps and terrorizes a family as time progresses. Acting from the thing shows how paranoia and distrust gets to people until finally, they kill someone out of fear or suspicion. Jump scares, world building, music, story, and acting are key to making excellent horror media, but not all of them are the same. No voice acting takes the silent protagonist route, and no jump scares means they focus on the other four to make it scary. But with big studios and companies always pumping out movies and games, people usually go towards the little companies. Instead of making things for the pursuit of money, they try new ideas to make something that we haven't seen. And you'd be surprised how good they are. None Massacre, 
night delivery, mother, welcome to the game, martyr, midsummer, good night mommy, hereditary. All these movies and games were made by small studios and they were really good. Does that mean all small studios make the best horror? No, not really, but at least they try new ideas. Look. I know it's hard to come up with new ideas for things, and pursuing these ideas might not work, but there is no harm in trying. Just make sure it's a new idea, the story is compelling and makes sense, the world building is interesting, the acting has to be great, the music complementing each moment of the movie or game, use a few jump scares, don't use any loud noises to signify the jump scare, and make sure it all works well together. But hey, other than that, I think you got yourself a piece of horror right there. This is the end of the video, but I want to keep the discussion going, so tell me your opinions in the comments about the horror genre, because like I said, I am not experienced enough about this stuff, and I honestly want to know more. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know how to end this video, so here's a gif of a cat. Look how cute he is. <laughs>